Hey guys, today I'm going to show you a little bit of how I light and film my dioramas. Before I get right into it, I have to say that this really starts in the planning process. As I design my dioramas, I plan how I'm going to light them right into the design, like lighting through a window or something like that, and so that really helps when it comes to actually filming them. So this is my usual camera setup. I know some of you are already thinking that this is way too expensive and not everyone is going to be able to have access to this kind of equipment. I've been doing video for over a decade so I've built up some things over time and it is what I like to use. But for everyone that's just trying to get into lighting and filming their dioramas and making them look a little bit better, I'm going to show at the end how to just take your phone camera and use creative lighting to get really good results. So this thing definitely is a beast. Uh, I put it all together like this and then I use it on a Rhino motorized slider. There's a reason that I have every piece on here and so I'll walk you through it. The basic camera setup is a Sony A7S Mark III and a Laowa 24mm probe lens. Um, this just enables me to get all the way inside my dioramas with the probe lens and get incredibly close. I can focus within an inch of an object. Then with the Sony I really like this camera because it can perform in incredibly low light situations and because of this lens its widest aperture is f14 it means you need a lot of light and so even with my powerful lights i'm often shooting at high iso levels with this camera and it works out really well the other reason is because i usually film at a higher frame rate than normal and i'll get into that in a little bit so i have it set up on this camera rig i have some rods that has a lens support that's supporting the lens on the bottom and then the Rhino focus motor is on top. This kind of just sandwiches the lens down between the two and so it makes it so it doesn't move at all when I'm changing focus or when the slider is changing focus. I also have this Cinei Wi-Fi transmitter. It basically just sends a signal of what the camera sees to any iOS device and so I usually use my iPad to do all my camera monitoring. So here's an example of how I went and filmed this Resident Evil diorama. I mentioned a couple videos ago that Aperture sent me their new Amaran 200D to try out on the channel and it's basically become my main light source. It has a lot more power than the other lights I have and so I use it as my main key source of light. For this diorama it meant shooting through the main two windows into the scene. So I'm setting it up on a C-stand right now and positioning it to be close to where I want it to be. And as you'll see later when I use my iPhone, this is probably one of the cheapest parts of all of the video gear I just explained, but the most important. One thing that I've started to do this year is use this standing desk. I either have my camera on the slider with the standing desk, or in this case the diorama, and I can just very easily raise or lower it so I can make new camera moves. This is actually huge because with the probe lens, it's really hard to position the height of the camera perfectly, and this just makes it so much easier. So for my camera settings, I'm generally shooting at 120 frames a second because I need it to be slowed down in post so that the fog and other elements in the scene are moving at a speed that looks natural. And even with the lens set to f14 or even sometimes up to f22, I need this focus motor to keep my shots in focus because of how close I am. So the Aperture 200D has made this a lot easier. I can now shoot at lower ISO levels and come out with an image that's a little less grainy. And the light overall has been so easy to work with. So right before I start the shot, I add some haze with a haze in a can. And you can see the effect in the light that I was going for with the light shooting through the windows and creating these light rays in the fog. So for the camera movement, I do use the Rhino Arc 2 motorized slider. So far, it's been really awesome. It handles most of what I want to do very well. But it isn't cheap, and there are a lot of decent Motorized sliders now for only a couple hundred bucks, and in fact, before I got the Rhino, I did a lot of my first videos here on the YouTube channel with a $200 motorized slider. But to get back to those who are just really starting out and want to try filming with their phone, as long as you have a nice bright light, something like the Aperture 200D, you can try doing what I did here. Using an app like Filmic Pro, 
you can lock your exposure settings and focus. And so I just put my phone into 120 frames per second mode, locked the exposure and focus, and then started moving it just with my hand after spraying the haze in a can. You want to try to move smoothly, but because we're filming at 120 frames per second, it looks much smoother in post and you can pull off quite a bit. As long as you make sure to really get your phone in there in the scene and do cinematic moves like left to right slider moves, what looks like this at first will look like this when it's slowed down in post. So there are a lot of reasons why the professional quality equipment is better and especially for what I do when I'm trying to do a, a lot of different types of shots and different types of dioramas, I like having the flexibility and the quality that I get from it. But as you saw in the end, just an iPhone, which mine is only an iPhone 11, can do quite a good job as long as you light the scene well and with enough light. So if you really enjoyed this, let me know in the comments if you'd like to see something in the future that would be more of a deep dive course on how I film and walk you through step by step the process. Also hit the thumbs up and subscribe and go over to my Patreon if you really want to see more behind the scenes of what I do on this channel. I really appreciate all the patrons that I have and the support that they give means so much to keeping this channel going and allowing me to do really cool projects now and in the future. See you next time.